This is the 2020 ASUS VivoBook S15, otherwise known as the S533. While it might look similar on the inside and the outside, there are in fact some design changes and a specs bump, which there are some things that I like, but unfortunately, there are some things that I do not like about this year's upgrade as well. So let's talk about all of them in today's review. Like its predecessor, this year's VivoBook S15 is an extremely well-built machine with a magnesium alloy chassis and polished chamfered edges. It weighs 1.8 kilograms, which is pretty lightweight for a 15-inch machine. ASUS surprisingly left out the ergo lift hinge and an IR camera this time, which I don't think is an issue for some, but I do miss having them. The 15-inch IPS panel has slightly better colors than last year's with a decent viewing angle. However, the maximum 250 nit brightness can still be an issue for some even when used indoors. Port selection is similar, however, we are still seeing that two standard size USB 2.0 ports on the right, while the USB-C port still doesn't support the USB power delivery charging. The VivoBook S15 now uses a Torx security screw instead of the standard Phillips screw for its base, discouraging users from accessing the internals but it also means expansion is compromised. Which unlike its predecessor, you can no longer upgrade the RAM as it is soldered onto the motherboard, but thankfully there is a second M2 slot for expanding storage. Otherwise, we are seeing three major improvements here. A larger cooling fan unit, 50 watt hour battery, and better speakers. Powering the VivoBook S15 is the Intel Core i5-10210U processor supported by 8GB of dual-channel DDR4 RAM, a 32GB plus 512GB Intel Optane H10 hybrid SSD, and NVIDIA GeForce MX250 graphics. The laptop also supports Wi-Fi 6 connectivity which many users will be happy to know. Overall, the laptop performs great throughout the period and it is more than sufficient for most productivity tasks. I even tried scrubbing a 4K video project on Premiere Pro 2020 with very minimal titles and was glad it managed to pull it through. This is finally all thanks to Adobe's support for GPU rendering on NVIDIA CUDA cores, although I still advise against treating this as a creative workhorse due to the limited RAM. I also wish ASUS could have used a PCIe Gen 3 X4 SSD for faster write speeds, but the current storage option isn't something I can't live with. The working area is very comfortable to work on as it remains cool most of the time. CPU idle temperatures average around 50 degrees Celsius, while load temperatures can hit the maximum 80 degrees Celsius, which is pretty decent and the CPU is able to hit its burst speed at 4.2 GHz without any throttling. The keyboard offers a great tactile feedback and some users will be glad that ASUS has increased the keycap size of the numpad. Though I wish for a wider trackpad, the tracking performance is acceptable. Battery life continues to be a selling point of the new VivoBook S15. This round, I managed to score 8 hours and 40 minutes of productivity usage, which I can easily survive the workday with multiple sessions without looking for a plug point. The laptop can also recharge in 90 minutes when the battery runs flat with the 65 watt charger. The 2020 ASUS VivoBook S15 is still one of the best mid-range laptops you can buy out there for the price of 3,199 ringgit. Unfortunately, the compromises ASUS has done on this year's VivoBook S15 can be a deal breaker for some if you are a multitasker or open a lot of browser tabs because this thing doesn't allow you to upgrade its RAM. So that's something to ponder about if you are someone like this. So that's pretty much about my review and thoughts about the 2020 ASUS VivoBook S15. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more tech videos coming right up. I'm Warren with KL Gadget TV and I will see you in the next one.